Hello SIS producers. Welcome to our online 2.0 training video. My name is Jenny Hammond and I am the Director of Business Development here at SIS. I will be going over products as well as walking you through the online process of quoting, binding, and servicing your accounts on our 2.0 platform. Uh, I want to go through a couple of items very quickly first and show you our website. Um, our website's full with useful information and resources to help you write business with us. Uh, here's a little bit of background about SIS. We began in 2005 with PCIC, a general liability policy for contractors, and have added several exclusive market sense as well as added a wholesale division with several contract binding markets to assist you with not only contractors but all Main Street USA business. Our goal is to be your one-stop shop for commercial business. This tab will give you some information on all of our programs that are exclusive to only appointed SIS producers. You will be able to quote and bind all these products on the 2.0 Raider, which I will be getting to very shortly. Here is a list of our wholesale programs. So if you ever have anything come across your desk and you wanna see if we have a home for it, this is a great place to check as well as get applications and submission instructions. Under the resources tab, you can get a quick tutorial as a new producer to SIS. Um, you can download applications and surplus line documents, request loss runs, uh, and check out our current promos that we run every month. Uh, here you can file a claim uh, and our contact information. Uh, if you ever need any assistance and uh, need to change information about your agency, such as uh, address change, name change, Please complete a new W-9, which you'll find under the um, Documents tab, and email those requests over to us at marketing at sisinsure.com. Um, and please feel free to contact us at this email address as well if you'd like to schedule any additional training, have login issues, or need any additional support. Um, my marketing team and I will be happy to assist you any way that we can. So now I would like to get into our online 2.0 rating system. Um, so this is the SISonlineMGA.com, SISonline 2.0. Uh, you'll have some tabs up here that are little icons uh, that I wanna go over quickly with you. This is our home screen, and that's the screen that you're seeing right now. This is where you'll be able to see any quotes that are in progress that have been uh, sent over for approval, um, that have been approved, that are pending bind, that are incomplete binds or new binds. If you are looking for a quote and you don't see it here, it's possible that it has expired. So you'll be able to find that under the archived tab and just simply open up that quote, make any modifications, it'll reactivate it for you. Uh, this is our renewal center tab. So if you have any accounts coming up for renewal, go ahead and click that button to view those renewals. If you've marked a quote as a favorite, which I'll be showing you here shortly, um, you'll be able to find it under your favorites tab. It's a really great shortcut for any quotes that you find that you're coming back to quite frequently. Um, then we also have a new e-sign feature. So this is where you can check status on any documents that have been sent out for e-signature as well as a chat feature where you can live chat with an underwriter uh, and binding department, audit department, and billing department. So this is a great place to go to get some information um, from any of those departments, uh, or you can simply give us a call as well. And that contact information is down here. And we'd love to get your feedback, so please uh, click this button and let us know what you think. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to quote a general liability policy on our rater. What you're gonna do is click this comparative rater under the general liability tab. And you're gonna to start to enter in your insured's information. Enter in their zip code. Enter in their gross receipts, sub costs, and number of employees. The payroll is done in ranges, so go ahead and select the range of payroll, how many years in business, and if this is a premise only policy. Once we enter in a class code here, we're gonna to start to get some premium populating into these four boxes down below. Each of these boxes uh, resemble the programs that you can choose from. We have our PCA, which is our small program for the risk retention, and we have our small A, for the A-rated program. If I were to change this to a different class code that doesn't fit into the small 
programs, then it, the system is automatically going to make that determination for you and place it into those large programs. So now you'll see it's changed to PCIC, which is the large risk retention program, and the large A, A-rated program. The other two options here are claims made. So you can choose from occurrence or claims made in either of the two programs. Now, if you notice here over to the right, we have a percentage of 31% showing in this circle. This is giving us our application progress. So it's letting us know um, that we need to be at 100% before we can send this over for approval. If you're having trouble figuring out what is missing, go ahead and click that circle and it will highlight those fields in red that are missing before you can send it over for approval. Once you have some pricing in these boxes down here, you can save your application and come back to it later. If you try to save it without any pricing, it's not going to save that quote for you. Up on the right hand corner is the app ID. So we're gonna go ahead and save this application and now we'll be able to find it in our uh, in progress quotes which is right here, this Lulu's painting, same app ID as we just saw. So I do have another quote that is a little bit more completed for this uh, video, and I'm gonna go ahead and open that for you. Before I do, I wanna show you these little buttons over here. Again, we have our app ID. We have a symbol here which allows you to cross sell into one of our other programs. Um, so without having to enter in the information all over again, it, say for instance into a equipment quote or into a builder's risk quote, it will take this insured's information that you've entered into this application and fill it into a new application for one of those quotes. And we call that our cross sell feature. You can also assign this application to another uh, agent in your office if you do have admin rights. And then if you wanna make this a favorite, you're simply gonna click that heart and it will now show up in your favorites tab. So let's go into this quote that I've already got started. So as you can see here, we've got this quote completed. We've got uh, a painter, uh, we've got in his gross receipts, we've entered in his payroll, we've selected our class code uh, we've selected our limits, and we've got some premiums already populating down below. We'll continue to go through this quote and head into the endorsements. As we continue to scroll down the application, you'll come to this endorsement section. So you're going to go ahead and add any endorsements that your insured requires. Um, we have a per project A rated coverage endorsement, which I want to go over with you. This is for our risk retention. Um, because this is a non-rated program, if the insured has a certificate requirement of having an A-rated carrier, then you can purchase this A-rated per project endorsement for that project. Now you'll see we've lost the pricing on the A-rated program because we've let the system know we're not interested in the A-rated program because we've purchased an A-rated endorsement, which we would not need on the A-rated program. If I uncheck that box, then the A-rated program pricing will populate back in. You can add a blanket additional assured endorsement, your blanket waiver, blanket primary, go through and add any of the endorsements that you'll need. Some of these are buybacks. So for instance, if you have a plumber that is sweating pipes and using a torch, you're gonna wanna purchase this heating device buyback. So make sure to go through those and see what your insured may need. And as we add and remove any endorsements, pricing down here will change automatically. Uh, this is where you can enter in your broker fee. I've entered in a $150 broker fee, but feel free to enter in the broker fee that you choose. Um, you can also choose whether or not you want that broker fee to be displayed on the proposal. Uh, payment options. So I don't have um, all the payment options on my test account, but you will then see when you click this drop down, um, other options populate, uh, one of them being uh, a full pay. You can also choose to use one of our finance companies, um, or if you have your own finance company that you prefer, then there will be a third party finance option. So just go ahead and make your payment options there. I will keep this as full pay since that's the only option I have available. Um, and continue through the application, entering in your insured's license information, name, years of experience, entity. Um, anything that's not bolded is not a required field. Anything bolded is a required field. 
This is where we come to the use carry approved descriptions. And this is important because we do have a first tier of underwriting. Um, if the insured's information um, meets the criteria of that first tier, then they will be automatically approved when you click the request for approval button. Uh, one of those criteria is this use carrier approved descriptions. Um, if this is marked no, they automatically will not meet that criteria of the first year of underwriting and it will need to be reviewed by a physical underwriter. Uh, be sure to read this information. If it doesn't fit the description, then simply mark it no and enter in that information. We wanna make sure that we do have a good understanding of what the insured's operations are. This is where you're gonna enter in some information in regards to the insured's largest projects over the last five years, their gross receipts for the last 12 months, as well as how many projects they've performed over the last 12 months. Any states that they're working in would be entered into this field. Physical address and mailing address. If their physical address is the same as the mailing address, you're going to keep this button checked. If they have a separate mailing address, uncheck that button and then enter in the information here. Type of work performed, you're going to enter in the percentages, new construction versus repair, residential versus commercial, how many number of stories, uh, how many feet below grade, if they're going to be doing any work on roofing or any subcontracted work on roofing. I'm going to mark that no. If it is a yes, then you'll want to enter in the information and explain what type of work is being done. All of these fields here are gonna be pre-marked for you um, as a no on these questions um, and continue to scroll down. Now we've got automatic yes buttons here. So definitely read through the questions and answer them as they fit your insured. Now we can get into the coverages that can be added onto the general liability as a bundle. For instance, if we wanted to add some tool coverage, we would check this box, yes. And now we're gonna get a bundle option. Bundle number one can add 10,000 miscellaneous tools for as low as $200. Bundle number two will add $5,000 of office contents. Bundle number three will increase some of those limits and also add on some leased equipment and computer hardware. Bundle number four includes an installation floater. You can customize the type of coverage that you want and you can also do another option which is just rented and leased equipment. Enter in the information there and it will give you some pricing down below. Now that we're at the end of the quote, we're gonna select which program we want to have approved. So I will go ahead and select the small a, simply click the small a option. Now we've got a check mark next to it and now we can send it over for approval. It will then be automatically approved if it meets the first tier of underwriting or it will be sent over to be reviewed by an underwriter. The way you'll be able to tell whether or not it's been automatically approved is this status right here. It shows us that approval has been requested. Now that we have requested approval and we can see that our policy has been approved, we can go ahead and review the application packet if you sent in your agency's logo, the logo will appear on the application. If you haven't sent in your logos, please get those over to us as soon as possible because you will be able to see your logo here on the top right hand corner of the application packet and also over here to the left. Send those logos to marketing at sisinsure.com. This is the applicant's copy of the proposal. You'll see at the bottom, you'll, there's a place for the insured to sign. And by looking at the bottom of the proposal, you'll see which is the applicant's copy and which is the producer's copy. This is the binding request checklist, all the items that will need to be received in order to bind. This is a producer copy of the packet. And as we continue to scroll down through the application, we'll be able to see again, which ones are the applicant's copies and which ones are for the producer. All of the information is here that we just entered into the application online. And then we have our surplus lines documents that will need to be completed and signed as well. Our loss warranty letter, the invoice statement, which is going to tell you what your commission is and how much you're going to retain. A 
as well as how much to make out your check for to send over for binding, minus your commission. Then we have a draft check authorization form for your payment. You'll simply attach your trust check here for the amount indicated on the proposal. And then we've also include a payment authorization form for you to provide to your insured if you would like to collect a payment via credit card. So now once we have all these documents completed, we can upload them into the quote and go ahead and request coverage to be bound. So it's as simple as that. We've quoted and bound a policy online in just a few easy steps. I hope that you found this information to be informative and useful and that you will be quoting and binding with us in no time. Please reach out to us if you have any questions. Here is our contact information below. We're so happy to have you on board and we thank you for your business.